Yes, that's right. We're here in Smithers, B.C. for the National Inquiry into Murder to Missing Indigenous Women and Girls, day one of the community hearings. Now, this morning opened in prayer followed by song. Commissioners are listening to testimonies of family. There's many themes that have been uh, very prevalent all day today. So far, we've heard of issues with RCMP and cold case files, uh, concerns specifically about safety along the Highway of Tears, uh, the infamous Highway 16, where uh, there's limited bus service, there's no access to cell phones, and uh, accountability when women go missing is, is really in question uh, with, with regards to police um, and cold case files. Now joined with me, we have Marlene, uh, who will be testifying tomorrow. Marlene, can you tell me a little bit about uh, what, why, you're, why you're here today? I'm here for my sister, Doreen Jack. She's the uh, missing Jack family of <laughs> I would like everybody to know who Doreen was before she was Absolutely. And uh, Marlene, can you tell me a little bit about uh, some of the things that you'll be sharing with the inquiry today? I'll be sharing uh, Doreen's story, who she was, uh, the traumas that she's suffered from residents of her and after this. And what are you hoping after uh, years of, of trauma and years of missing um, your sister, what are you hoping that the inquiry can do? I'm hoping they would help us as family members to have a bit of a closure, answers. Um, they're giving us a lot of hope right now. But I, I sure would like to know where my sister is. Um, with this wide coverage that we're having today, I'm hoping a witness would step forward and let us know where my sister is and, and what happened to them the night they disappeared. So. And throughout, uh, throughout sharing this, this is definitely um, a lot of trauma and, and hearing families, uh, it's, it's very, very difficult to open up and share and reopen these wounds. How have you been preparing yourself for testifying? I've been going over uh, preparations uh, of what, to, what I would be expecting when I testify, pretty much around where the questions they'll be asking. Things change, so I have uh, a lot of family support. And I will be meeting with Ipana later and also talking with my cousin because she knows a lot more people than I do and, and she hears a lot more stories about Doreen than I did. So uh, uh, when Doreen disappeared, I was, I was in my lost years, so I, I didn't, I, I talked to her on the phone. Because we were residential, but we were not close. We were taught not to speak to each other in the same room. We were not that close. 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 And uh, hearing all this stuff about Doreen um, was heart wrenching. And last question for you. Can you tell me a little bit? When did, because uh, it wasn't only your sister, it was uh, actually family as well. It was all everyone that is on your t-shirt. Um, when did they when did they go missing? August 2nd, 1989. Uh, I would say it would have been a month earlier because uh, when you phone and say you're going to a logging camp for two weeks, you have to wait until that time period is up. And then uh, they didn't come and check on them until after the two weeks are up. So they actually disappeared a month before that they were actually So a lot of time has elapsed before they officially declared them missing. And as you continue to look for them, uh, obviously anyone with any information is uh, encouraged to contact uh, local authorities in this case. Um, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, APTN will be covering the inquiry. This is only day one. We will be here until Thursday. Now back to you in Winnipeg. All right, and as you heard, we'll have more from...